Hello everyone! In this MATLAB and Simulink tutorial, we explain how to export transfer functions and continuous time models from Simulink to the MATLAB workspace. The first step is to start Simulink. We do that by typing Simulink. Then click on the blank model to create a completely empty model. As a demonstration, I will create a simple feedback control system. The first step is to define a transfer function of our plant. How do we define transfer functions in Simulink? Let me give you an example. For example, let's say that our transfer function looks like this. 1 over s squared plus 5s plus 25. To define this transfer function in Simulink, double-click over here and search for transfer function. Click here, enlarge this block, double-click, and over here we need to specify the coefficients in the numerator and the denominator of our transfer function. In our case, the coefficient in the numerator is simply 1. Consequently, this list over here will look like this. It will simply be 1. Then, in the denominator, we have a polynomial. Here we have 1. Consequently, we need to define a list having these entries. 1 corresponding to this coefficient, then 5 corresponding to the second coefficient, then 25 corresponding to the third coefficient. So let's do it over here. We have 1, then we have 1, 5, and we have 25. Okay. Now you can see over, already over here that we have properly defined our transfer function. Good. This will be our plan. Next, let's define our controller. Over here, I will define a proportional and integral controller. That is the PI controller. The transfer function of the PI controller is the output of the PI controller, that is the input to the plant that comes here, this is u, is actually proportional gain multiplying the error plus integral gain over s, where s is the complex Laplace variable, multiplying the error. To define the integral and proportional control law, we need to first of all define the constants kp and ki, and then we need to form these two terms and to add them together. So let's do that. Okay, let's see what's happening over here. First of all, we need to create the set point. Here's the set point. Search for constant, and we will define the set point as a simple constant. Let it be 1. Then we need to define the error. For that we need a summation block. Here is the summation block. Connect the set point to the one port of the summation block. Over here double click on the summation block and change the sign over here to minus. Then connect the output of the plant to this minus sign over here. And now we have a feedback. The output of this block is actually the error. Again, let's write the transfer function of our PI controller. The transfer function is u is actually kp multiplying error plus ki over s multiplying error. Okay, let's create the proportional term. To do that, we need, first of all, the gain. Here's the gain. And that's it. This is the error. Connect this part. Double-click on the proportional gain, and let's select, for example, the proportional gain to be equal to 2. Click OK. Now we need this integral term. To create the integral term, first of all, we need an integrator. Double-click here and search for an integrator. Here it is. Okay. Then we need a gain. Here's the gain. Double click on the gain and let's select the gain 
for example, 0.2. Connect this part, and we need to add these two terms. That is, we need to add this line and this line. For that purpose, double click over here, and you can either use sum or add. Let's use add. Here it is. Connect this part and connect this part. Good. The output of this add block is actually u. So connect u to the input of our plant. And that's it. Okay, let's verify that this is correct. This is the output. This is the set point. This is the error. Error multiplying the proportional gain gives this term. Then error multiplying this 1 over s multiplying again gives an integral term and we add them together and finally let's define the scope over here connect the scope to the output of the system and let's run the simulation double click on scope and here it is okay from this graph we can see that the control algorithm is not properly designed Although this is not the main purpose of this video, let's try to improve this response. Okay, obviously we need to make this response to be faster. We can improve the speed of the response by increasing the proportional gain, for example, to 10, and we can also increase the integral gain, for example, to 2. Here we might have to be careful when increasing these terms since we might end up with unstable system. Let's increase the simulation time to 30 and let's run the simulation. Okay, double click here and let's see. Mm, looks better, not bad. However, this can still be improved. However, we are not going to improve this response in this video tutorial. Let's continue. Our goal is actually to export the transfer function of this system back to the MATLAB workspace. However, some of you might ask me the following question. Why do we need to export a model from Simulink to MATLAB? Well, if you want to design an advanced model-based control algorithm, you will most likely need an analytical form of a transfer function. Consequently, it's a good idea to learn how to export the model from Simulink to the MATLAB workspace. The idea for exporting the model is actually to use a model linearizer. Namely, the MATLAB can internally linearize this model and can export the linearized model back to the workspace. Now, since this model is linear, linearization will not change anything about the model and we will actually be able to export the exact transfer function. Again, since we are linearizing a linear model, we are not changing anything and we can follow this path to extract the model. To extract the model, we first need to define the inputs and outputs. The inputs, actually only one signal will be here and the output will be actually here. Let me use better like this. So this will be the input, u, and this will be the output, y. And this is our transfer function over here. Let's learn how to export this transfer function. The first step is actually to click over here, then do the right click, then click on linear analysis point and find input perturbation. That is, we specify that the input is here and do the same thing over here, do the right click, then linear analysis points and search for output measurements. Okay, now we have basically output over here and we have the input over here. Next, we need to export the transfer function. To do that, click on apps, expand this block and search for model linearizer. Start the model linearizer, expand. Okay, so let's see what do we have over here. We don't see anything over here. However, if you click on body diagram, you will be able to generate over here our model. And here is the body diagram of the complete transfer function from the input 
to the output. And you can play with this body diagram. You can actually investigate stability, compute the gain and phase margins, etc. However, we are not going to do that in this video tutorial. To export this model to the MATLAB workspace, simply select the model and move it over here and release the click. And you can see that now the model is in the MATLAB workspace. And that's it. Simple as that. Next, go back to the MATLAB workspace and type whose. You can see the exported model. Let's investigate this exported model. Okay, we see a bunch of numbers, letters, and some names over here. The best strategy to directly export the transfer function is actually to use the built-in MATLAB commands. Over here, we will use the transfer function function and we will specify as the input the exported model. This function will actually export the transfer function of our linear system and I will call it transfer function. Let's evaluate this and we can see it over here. So here is the transfer function from input constant to the output transfer function. That's it. Now, let's compare the step response of this exported model with the step response computed in Simulink. To do that, we will simply type step and then we will use our transfer function. Here, you have to be very careful. For example, if you do this, you will actually obtain our transfer function. So it's better idea, it's better idea to index it with the proper number. Since we have only a single transfer function, we can type this. And let's evaluate this. Okay, so here is the step response. We can see that we go from 0 to 120 seconds. And you can see that eventually we reach the set point. Here's our Simulink simulation. To make the comparison fair, we need to zoom in over here. That is, we need to go from 0 to 10 seconds. Okay, and here it is. You can see that these two graphs look alike. Actually, they're almost the same. This means that we have properly exported our transfer function and by simulating the transfer function in MATLAB and Simulink, we obtain an identical match. We can also analytically verify that our exported transfer function is correct. We can do that by actually directly modeling the transfer function in MATLAB. Let's do that. Let's define s to be a simply a complex variable. We usually do it like this. Next, let's define the transfer function of our proportional integral control. Kp is 10 and Ki is 2. That is the proportional gain is 10 and the integral gain is 2. These are the precise values that are in our Simulink model. Let's continue. The controller transfer function is simply kp plus ki over s. And that's it. Let's evaluate this part. And here it is. This is the transfer function of our pi controller. Next, let's model our plan. From the Simulink model, it follows that the plant is 1 over s squared plus 5 multiplying s plus 25. And this is our plant model. Okay, now our closed loop transfer function is now c multiplying w plant over 1 plus c multiplying w plant. This is the standard formula for, for the closed loop transfer function. Here it is. Okay, now there is an issue over here. We can see that some of these terms can be canceled. To simplify this expression, we will use the function called mean real. And we specify as the input WCL and we assign the output to the WCL. Okay, let's see the output. Here it is. It's much simpler. Now let's compare this transfer function with the transfer function exported from the Simulink model. 
To do that, we will simply type transfer function one, and here it is. Let's do the comparison. We can see 10s plus two, 10s plus two, and in the denominator, we can see s to the power three, five s squared plus 35 s plus two, and that's identical to the denominator of the transfer function exported from the Simulink model. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.